Behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy. And for some reason, that starts a fight. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I got one of those lozenges for sore throats and then also vitamin C stuff, but I don't know what it is. Except for a lozenge that's making me kind of short my words. <laughs> I almost spit it out at you. <laughs> but seriously, at this time of year, when you see lights going up, people having Christmas parties and nativity scenes and Hanukkah little menorahs, you know, or Hanukkahs and Kwanzaa, well, you know, whatever they do. <laughs> and Boxer Day and this day and that day and, you know, celebrations of buying things and giving things and watching things and doing things and hearing things and moving things and you got the idea. It's kind of like a fun time. You know, a season of joy. A season of glad tidings. A, a chance to, you know, maybe go on a vacation because you get a vacation. A chance to go celebrate because you get a chance to celebrate. I don't know about you, but most Americans I know Look for a chance to party. <laughs> party. And you know, you're going to see all those award things on TV and the lighting of the tree and the ice skating and snow and this, that, and the other thing. And quite frankly, I don't understand why Christians want to fight what is right to be might in the sight of God. You know, I mean, no offense, we all know that, you know, December 25th isn't Christmas. Who cares? It's Christmas for me. <laughs> Maybe it isn't the day Jesus was born. Do you think he really cares? He's not born. He rose from the dead. He's born again. Pick that day. Celebrate it. Because, you know, Jesus didn't really celebrate his birthday much. That's why he didn't want us either to get so carried away because he knew what we would do anyways. Get carried away. And so, this time of year, I'm always fascinated by the fights that go on. You know, oh, this is the reason for the season. No, it's not. The reason for the season is because God made it. He made winter. Hello? God made the sun to rise. Woo! You know, kind of goes up and down and all the way around the world. Or something like that. The world spins, you know, goes around on its axis, you know, around the solar system and all that good stuff, you know. God did it. Oh, and he causes the rain to fall, you know, on the wicked and the good. Ooh, you mean God cares about the wicked and the good? Yeah, you see, God doesn't really care about the times and the seasons. He set them up and set them in order, set them in place and let them go. That's the most important thing about it. He created it and let it go as it is in its place for times and for seasons and for marking things and keeping track of time. But a lot of people tend to get carried away when they want to argue about things rather than enjoy the day the Lord has made. You see, the bottom line beneath everything that goes on during the season is this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're told to rejoice and be glad in it. Because if we started our day with God, hopefully we're going to end our day with Him too. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that's what I try to do. But if we started our day with God, then usually... He'll direct us through the day, and we can enjoy it in some way for what it is that He designed it today to be. We're told that today, if you hear His voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation, because there are a lot of people out there that have really hardened hearts. And I don't mean just people that are Christian, I mean Christians too. They really, because the love of many have waxed cold, have hardened their heart. You know, and it really takes a lot more to kind of wake them up. You know, it takes a lot more to jive them up because that's why they get into all these kind of like hyper-feeling churches, you know, mega churches so that they have mega worship so that they can feel mega close to God because they're mega out of it. That's the way I figured it. You know, the reason to be in a mega church is because you're mega needing, you know, and you need the megas. Mega here, mega there, mega everywhere. But the intimacy that God had with some shepherds out tending their flocks at night was such that they were just doing their business, you know, working in the fields. And suddenly the skies opened up. Whoa! Imagine that. And God met them where they were at. Whoa! Imagine that. And they didn't even know what was going on. And they said, hey, let's go check it out. And so they did. 
And that's kind of what this season's all about. Don't fight for your right to have a nativity or to, you know, attack Santa, because to me, Santa Claus is Santa Claus, and I kind of like the old guy, you know? I mean, it's kind of fun getting presents, don't you think so? I kind of like looking at nativity scenes. Makes me think about Jesus. Kind of nice, you know? It's like, wow, I remember those old days, you know? <laughs> kind of like, you know, where I've been sleeping in lately, you know, stables. No, I, just kidding, I have a house. <laughs> well, an apartment. But, you know, looking at a nine branch menorah, you know, although it's not a miracle, what the heck? At least they're trying to do what's right, you know? Put light in the darkness, you know, and shine something out there, you know, to tell the world that there's light and hope. You know, I kind of like enjoying each one of these things for what they are. You know, Christmas for Christmas, Santa Claus for Santa Claus, Rudolph for Rudolph, you know. I don't try to put Rudolph inside of a crutch. Kind of looks stupid, doesn't it? You know, have a little red-nosed Jesus or, you know, kind of like a manger with a, a Santa in it. Uh, no. So, if I don't do that, why would I not enjoy each one for what they are, as they are, the way they are? Because after all, isn't that what God said? You know, like he made the world, you know, kind of all the things that are in it, you know. Well, I don't see anything so wrong with Santa or so wrong with Rudolph or so wrong with any of these things. Matter of fact, even the day that they say is supposed to be Saturnalia or some other, you know, weird Roman Greco holiday of some type, quite frankly, I'm not a Roman Greco kind of type guy, you know. I kind of enjoy, you know, like the holiday season and, you know, the fact that people can get together and maybe if they're interested, they might even talk about what I'm interested in. Because, you know me, I'm boring, you know, I like to talk about Jesus, but hey, if they're talking about, you know, Santa, I'm not opposed to it. Hey, I know St. Nick, I know the story, and I know everything about it, you know, around the world. But I also know the good that comes. You know, the things that we can do with it. The opportunities that are presented at this time of year for people to get together. People to help each other. People to share with each other. People to care for each other. And I think, you know, I think that's kind of what Jesus did. You know, he kind of looked around and said, hey, you know, take a look around. Here we are at the temple. You know, we could all act holy, you know, be like the Pharisees and the scribes, you know. We could just thank God that we're not like those other people, you know, who are like, oh, no, they do Christmas, you know, and they got trees and they decorate them, you know, and we're going to pretend like that's all satanic, you know. <laughs> Ooh. You know, or you could look at them and they, people that do those things, enjoy them and participate in them, seem to have you know, a humbleness, a humility that they want to give and receive. You know, like Jesus said, give and it would be given unto you. I don't know about you, but that kind of sounds Santa claus to me. Maybe Jesus made a mistake, you know, maybe he got influenced by, you know, saying this. Or is it the other way around? You see, a lot of what people do to make controversy is they become the controversy themselves. They are not at peace, so they have no peace on earth, goodwill towards men. They want to create a division. They cause strife by their own actions. Jesus said, judge a tree by its fruit. By the fruit itself, you'll know what kind of tree they are. Whether they be, you know, like a tree of righteousness with peace and love and joy, they're kind of like excited for the season and they enjoy it, they participate in it. Not the power of positive thinking, you understand, but just the fact that they enjoy who they are, as they are, the way they are, and they got a little extra, so they're going to give it out to help some other people. You know, maybe even invite them over or watch some lifetime movies, you know, about <laughs> peace on earth, goodwill towards men, you know, and who knows, maybe some other Christmas special, Snoopy Christmas or something, Charlie Brown, hey, <laughs> I kind of like the Charlie Brown Christmas, it reminds me of my kind of Christmas tree. Have you seen it? Yeah, you see this little coleus bush? <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I do have some Christmas trees behind me, but hey, this is my kind of Christmas, you know, a little coleus bush. Because I remember one time laying in a hospital bed, dying from Crohn's disease, and not thinking I was going to make it another year. And sure enough, the only Christmas I had was a coleus bush that was right there in the window. And you know what? God blessed me with it. And I looked at that, and God spoke to me and said, You will not die, but you'll declare my glorious works. And for me, that was a pretty special Christmas. And I thought of it as Christmas, not as God's Day or Jesus' birthday. But 
I kind of enjoyed it. The fact that, A, I was going to live, and B, that, you know, they brought me a meal for the first time because I hadn't eaten in about a month, and they decided on that day that I could start eating solid food. Wow, that was novel. <laughs> they made a big mistake about not feeding me at that time, especially down to 90 pounds or 89. <laughs> I tell you, you never know what men and women will do when they think they know what they're doing. It nearly killed me. But the point of it all is, is that you, when you talk with and walk with God daily, you can ask Him what you should do in enjoying the day that God has made. Because every day is going to come and go. You may not know if it's Christmas or if it's Hanukkah or if it's Kwanzaa or if it's Friday or Monday or Sunday or Tuesday or whatever day of the week it is, whether it's Advent or whether it's Convent. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> But the reality of having a relationship means that when the sun's shining, you can enjoy it. When the sun's when it's sun's raining, when the sky is raining, you can enjoy it because you know who made it. And that's what the point of this season is. You gotta know who made you. You gotta know who created you. You gotta know who you're serving and why you're doing it. Because if you're just causing controversy, you're not really a tree of righteousness with, you know, kind of like love and joy and peace or goodwill towards men that God has given at this time. But you're more kind of like, uh, excuse me, more like Satan's will for men at this time to create, you know, arguments and fights and, you know, getting in debt and doing all kinds of stupid things that, you know, fighting over presents and fighting over this and arguing about that. I don't know about you, but me personally, that's not much of a Merry Christmas, is it? Matter of fact, I don't think it's a happy new year. I don't even think it's a day the Lord has made for you. I think it's more like a man, it's more like a day you made into your image and created it the way you wanted it to be. And it turned out exactly like you thought. Divisive, strife laden, argumentative. As a matter of fact, if you don't have peace on earth, goodwill towards men at this time of year, man. I'm not sure if you're a Christian or not, because you know what? Huh. This is a good time, really, to be thinking about you know who and you know what.